And this morning's good news is taken out of the Gospel of St. John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I'm not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thongs of his sandals. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He was not the light. What a strange thing to say about someone especially someone sent from God, he is not the light. Today's text seems far more concerned to tell us what John is not, rather than what he is. There were strange things going on down in the wilds by the River Jordan. This person shows up out of nowhere wearing camel's hair and a strap of leather around his waist, eating locusts and wild honey, crying out, the time is up. Repent. Turn around. Be baptized. Strange things indeed. And the religious authorities in Jerusalem were getting nervous. People were flocking to hear this wild man and to be baptized. So what do the authorities do? They did what governing authorities always do. They formed a committee to investigate, a task force, or perhaps here at Spooner, a transition team and a call committee made up of all the right people charged with writing a position paper on this troublesome business of the baptizer. So we are told, priests and Levites were sent from Jerusalem. 
to get at the truth and to settle this matter once and for all. The committee questioned him. Who are you? Give us an answer. Now you know how this works. One usually is told something about what the person does, such as, I'm a farmer, or I'm a businessman, or I'm a teacher, or I'm a nurse. John's answer, which we are pointedly told is a confession, is rather strange. He says only what he is not. I am not the Messiah. Now the committee is frustrated at that answer, no doubt muttering to themselves, what kind of answer is that? We've come all the way from Jerusalem for that? If you're not the Messiah, who are you? Are you Elijah? In those days, there was an expectation that Elijah would return to prepare the way for the Messiah. I am not, answers John. Well then, the committee persists, are you the prophet? Not a prophet, but the prophet. The one spoken about in Deuteronomy 18. No, says John, I'm not the prophet. You can sense the growing frustration of the committee. Who are you then? We need an answer. We have to write a report. Our bosses back in Jerusalem are going to be upset if we don't justify our expense account. What do you have to say about yourself? Well, says John, I'm a voice crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said. The committee, however, can't leave it at that. That's it? Just a voice? What are you baptizing for? How do you explain all these people? This isn't just a voice. It's a movement. And with that, the answer becomes even more mysterious. No, it is not a movement, says John. I baptize with water, but like the baptisms of old, it's only a purification rite. I can't, or there is one among you whom you do not know. I can't even begin to do what he will do. I'm not even worthy to untie his shoelaces. And with that, apparently, the investigation ends. The committee packs up their briefcases and heads back to Jerusalem. Can you imagine what their report must have been? What was all of this about? Like the committee, we too are left asking the question. But unlike the committee, we have the advantage of knowing, and here I, I suspect I'm going to uh, be testing some of your ages, but unlike the committee, we have the advantage of knowing as Paul Harvey, how many are familiar with Paul Harvey? Oh yeah, I knew a few of you would be. As Paul Harvey used to say, the rest of the story. It's about Advent. A coming, the coming of something absolutely new. John knew that the past was all over now. That he had to deny all connections to the past, even the best and the most hopeful. So he could cry out, make straight the way of the Lord. 
so that John could get out of the way of Jesus. What is it that is so new about this coming one? It's grace. Grace is what it's all about. And the words left out of today's reading, I'm not quite sure why they did that. But in the words left out of today's reading, we're given the key. It says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace is the reason John can't even begin to touch what Jesus is all about. Grace is the reason John can't even untie Jesus' shoes. The problem is that grace does not fare well in this world. The problem is that for many people, and in many ways, John is a more desirable Messiah, Messiah than Jesus. You see, John was a tell it like it is prophet, an Elijah who could call down fire from heaven and finish off the priests of Baal, a preacher who could cry out, you brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? The axe is laid to the root of the tree. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and cast into the fire. The Messiah's winnowing fork is in his hand. He will thresh out the wheat and throw the chaff to the wind. John was a heroic figure who stood up to King Herod and eventually had his head chopped off at the whim of a belly dancer. John, the hero of justice and righteousness. Who would not prefer him? Even John himself, it seems, began to wonder if Jesus was really the coming one. When John was in prison, he sent an investigation committee of his own to ask Jesus, are you the one who is to come? Or are we to look for another? John might have been wondering, where is the axe, the winnowing fork, the fire? Is this all there is? Jesus simply answered, Go and tell John what you see and hear. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news preached to them. All acts of mercy, sheer grace. That is why our text warns us that in spite of the attraction of John, John was not the light. John brought no grace. John has no real purpose, no role to play, except to point that long bony finger of his John is nothing, has no real job description. He is truly only a voice, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. You see, grace can't be captured in any of the old roles. Grace can find no place here among us. Grace can only be a cry in the wilderness. Remember when uh, some of Jesus' disciples came to Jesus and asked him 
where he was from? Of course, another one of those questions we often ask to find out who a person is. Jesus replied to their question, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Just as there was no room for him in the inn, there is no room for grace. Indeed, it was because he brought grace, the grace of forgiveness, that Jesus was eventually crucified. So John was killed because he preached the law to Herod. Jesus was killed because he preached grace. There is no room here. There is just a voice crying in the wilderness. So don't be surprised that today, just as it was way back then, you too are left only with a voice, mine. You see, for better or worse, I must speak it once again. Make straight the way of the Lord. What's coming? Grace. Forgiveness. The true light of the world. For you. God in his infinite love, mercy, and patience has given you yet another chance to hear the voice. No doubt this is the real test. Can you bear the grace of God? For you see, this is the judgment. The true light which gives light to everyone was in the world. And the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own. And his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, to all who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And from this fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Believe it. It is for you. Amen.